this afternoon. It is November the 20th. We're just over a week from uh, uh, Thanksgiving. So, but uh, we want to welcome you here this afternoon, and we are going to get started right up here at uh, the top of the hour. It is now 3 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully, on the East Coast, it's 4, and then uh, on the Pacific Coast and Mountain Time, you got your times there at 2 and uh, 1 o'clock there. So, or uh, yeah, that's right. Two and one. So, anyway, we want to welcome you here this afternoon. We want to make sure and ensure that everybody is hearing us correctly and loud enough. If you don't mind, for those that have done this in the past, you'll notice that there's a little hand up in that right hand corner over there by your uh, go to meeting control panel. If you'll click on that hand, we will uh, be able to indicate to us that we are coming through loud and clear. All right, so I've got one hand out of 20 something people <laughs> okay okay got Richard there there we go Minerva Muhammad good to have you David Brian Adam uh, looks like we've got a lot of people coming in Jane good to have you here this afternoon but it looks like my voice is coming through just fine all right again we're going to talk to you today about why starting your medical billing business in 2014 is critical to your success. So folks, just hang on as we certainly get started. Again, here's just a little picture, a little graphic right here just to make sure that you are uh, seeing exactly where to raise that hand if you need us. And we'll also even show you uh, here where you can uh, type in some questions here as well. Again, as you can see here, my name is Eric Oj. I'm the Director of Research and Development here at American Business Systems. And that is only just to let you know that we're here researching and developing every aspect of the business, whether it's the marketing, whether it's the uh, software, whatever it might be, that's what we're doing here. We're making sure that everything's up and running just fine for you as a new licensee. I want to tell you how to get to know American business systems. First of all, I want to let you know that we've just received uh, one of the top franchises uh, plaques here from Franchise Direct. We are one of their top franchise and or slash business opportunities that you can find out there on the internet. And we just got that awarded to us just here this last month. If you have not yet gone out to our website, please go out there and visit us at uh, absystems.com. And this is where you'll be able to start your due diligence with us here at American Business System. You're going to go, and go right over here to About Us, find out more about us there. Then get into the business package, get to the income potential. Matter of fact, Patrick and I will get into that area this afternoon. But really, if you want to get into a much deeper uh, study, much deeper due diligence about uh, American business systems, go to this orange button right here or this one right up here at the top, and that's going to get you into what's called our virtual brochure. Folks, in our virtual brochure, you can see it's broken down to, into several sections, and each of those sections have several pages worth of information. There's printed material, there are videos, there are charts, there are graphs, uh, and then lastly in that final step is where you'll find the purchase agreement, all the other information about how to fund your business. So be sure to go over into that virtual brochure, and along the way, simply have some time to stop and ask your ABS rep of, of maybe specific questions. If you have some specific questions and you'd like to come by and visit us, I know that you've been talking to one of us here at AB, uh, ABS, but if you want to come by our corporate office, you can take down our address at 5751 Kroger Drive, Keller, Texas. We're in a community just north of Fort Worth. Uh, we're just a short drive up from the Austin area or if you're anywhere in the Texas area, or if you'd like to fly into the Dallas-Fort Worth area port, Airport, that's DFW Airport. Just fly in there. We'll make arrangements to have you picked up, brought over to our office, and visit us here. A lot of people ask us about our Better Business Bureau rating. You can see here we are still currently having an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau here in Fort Worth, Texas. And if you have not been out to our blog yet, that is also on our website and it's slash blog. Now, we keep this blog up quite frequently. This is uh, this was published, like you can see, on just a couple of days ago. This was our last training class that we held in October. Please go watch this and visit this, and you'll see and hear the testimonies from folks that have just come through training. Uh, also, you can join us and follow us on Twitter at AB Systems. 
just at AB Systems and follow us there as well. You'll keep up with all of the important blogs, dates, upcoming date, training dates, and also some uh, important uh, testimonials that you'll hear from Patrick with other licensees. Our next training workshop is just over two weeks away, November the, I mean, I'm sorry, December the 9th through the 13th. This is our last one for this year. We're looking forward to getting it done. There is currently only about six seats left out of this particular um, training workshop that we have coming up. So please, if you're looking to get into this one and get started here before 2014, just fill your paperwork out and come on and be with us and just join us here in a couple of weeks. Let me introduce you to our founder and CEO, Patrick Phillips. Patrick is an author and has written several, um, even really very recently, magazines articles. Folks, what you're seeing here is the latest BC Advantage. That's Billing and Coding Advantage. Uh, he is on the editorial board there with uh, Billing and Coding Advantage magazine. He just wrote this article, The Bright Future of, for Medical Billing Companies. You can see that it's dated just September 2013. Uh, two brand new articles that have just come out, uh, what to look for in the practice management system. Again, you can see that's done by uh, Patrick Phillips, our founder here at AB ABS. And then this one that just came out recently in one another magazine, the HBMA uh, magazine, uh, entitled "You Need to Adapt." Uh, uh, you need to adapt in order to survive. You can see this is by Patrick Phillips. Folks, these uh, magazines are just not little measly old magazines. These are the catalyst for all that's going on in the medical billing and coding world. And uh, we have, because of, of what we've been able to accomplish the last few years, we are being recognized by a lot of these organizations. And they've reached out to Patrick because of his uh, couple of books that he's already written, How to Reprogram Yourself for Success, and our Bible for medical billing, which is Cash Crunch to Cash Flow. Folks, that'll be part of your marketing campaign of what you're going to be getting. So Cash Crunch to Cash Flow there is the, uh, it's been authored by Patrick and a CPA. And really, without any further ado, let's bring Patrick on this afternoon. Patrick, it's good to have you here this afternoon. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Boy, he lets me know when I'm muted, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, hey, it's a good crowd here today. I like this. Excellent good. crowd. Yes, absolutely. We got over 26 people and and still counting coming on here. A lot of people interested in starting their own business right now, and especially in the healthcare industry. It's a growing thing. Absolutely. Well, Patrick, I was just reading. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just, I was just reading uh, my uh, Obamacare Survival Guide book. You can pick this up on Amazon, and I've mentioned this in previous uh, webinars, but uh, there are a couple of quotes out here that I want to read later that you are not going to believe, Eric. I don't think you've even heard these, so I'll get to that when we get to that uh, section. All right. Well, let's before we get started here, folks, we're also showing this little snapshot of a screen here to let you know that you will be able to ask questions throughout the webinar today. You'll see that we're pointing to that section right there. Um, folks, this, this webinar is for you, and we want to make sure that your questions are getting answered. So we, Patrick and I will be going through a lot of information over this afternoon uh, within the next uh, oh, 50 minutes, but we want you to ensure that we are here to answer your questions. Now, if Patrick and I can't get to your questions live, our, uh, our reps here, your rep that you're dealing with, We'll follow up with you on those questions. Patrick, you want to just kind of address and make sure that the people understand that they can ask any question they want to, and it will be answered. Yeah, we, we, don't, uh, we don't hide behind anything, guys. We have nothing to hide. Uh, we've been doing this for 20 years now, and so we are dedicated to making sure that people get all the information they need. We know this is a big decision. It's a lot of money to invest in any business. Uh, not as much as uh, McDonald's, but uh, you know there, there's a substantial fee up front, and it's a big commitment on your part. We know that, so we want you to ask all the questions you can possibly ask. We will get you every answer. If we don't know the answer immediately, we will certainly find the answer for you. All right, Patrick, let's get into right into our topic uh, this afternoon. And I know that we have uh, over the last couple of weeks, you and I have talked a lot about 
Obamacare. We've talked a lot about um, the uh, the other things that are going on in healthcare. Uh, but you know, Patrick, I think one of the biggest questions that a lot of people ask, uh, and why we would say it's critical for people to get started in getting their their medical billing business going, is because I think there's somewhat of a myth that doctors do their own billing. You want to address a little bit about that and explain why we have doctors don't do their own billing up on the screen right now? Well, there there are doctors, of course, who do their own billing. Uh, they they attempt to, I should say. It uh, doesn't mean they're doing a good job of it. They're using their own staff. They've invested thousands of dollars probably in software and hardware to be able to manage that inside their own office. And, uh, and yet more and more are not doing their own billing. Now, this is kind of a a new thing for people who are first looking into this business. They think, well, why, why do the doctors need me? You know, they, they do their own billing, right? Not necessarily. A lot of them have moved to outsourcing their billing. Now, even though they've done that in some cases, it doesn't mean they're happy with their outsource solution because, folks, most medical billers started years ago. They're old-time folks who are using old-time software and outdated technology. And so doctors are always looking for a better solution, and we just happen to have that with uh, our cloud-based uh, billing system. Patrick, I was just, I mean, not no more than 30 minutes ago, I was on the uh, call with one of our licensees. A as you know, we do demos for our licensees for their doctor prospects. And Patrick, I'm telling you, I just got off this call with this doctor uh, who is a surgeon, and uh, they are still doing so much of their billing with paper. And, and unbelievable. Un unbelievable. I'm just, I was shocked to even hear uh, that there are, that particular office, uh, and she even says even if they do all of their paperwork and try to put it into a system, it's still not working right for them. So hmm. they are truly looking for ways of getting this billing out of their office. So this was a demo that Eric did, folks, for one of our licensees, just like you will become a licensee when you come through our training. And uh, we set those demos up with our licensees. They set them up. We have an online system where they register and tell us when the doctor wants to see that demo. And then we, our staff, gets online and shows the doctor the system and all the advantages that they'll have by outsourcing their billing to you. So we're doing all the, quote, uh, sales pitch for you, answering all their questions on the phone, and usually throughout the whole demo, all you're hearing, right, Eric, is uh, wow from the doctors. Yeah, it was almost kind of funny, because as we started getting started there, and I was showing some of the key components to this, it was almost like they didn't realize that a system could actually do that, and it was almost kind of like, once we kind of got it going, then this office manager really got involved with me, so it was really impressive of how things were going. Uh, Patrick Landy is just asking a question. Can we ask questions yet? Yes, you may start asking your questions right now. So if you'd like to start typing your questions, you can go right ahead. But that no. was really interesting, Patrick. How you know here is a uh, a general surgeon again who is just uh, uh, almost several years back behind uh, uh, technology wise. Yeah, I, I was shocked when my wife started doing medical billing out of our home here in Fort Worth uh, back in 1987. I mean, this was before we were still doing it on a typewriter, you know, <laughs> with multiple carbon copies and everything and mailing it, of course, into the uh, clearinghouses. And uh, I, I was uh, always amazed when I walked into a doctor's office, even years later, to see that there were some doctors still filing and using paper. And our licensees tell us that even today, and I'm just... I can't even wrap my brain around that. Here we are. You know, it is the 21st century. <laughs> They're acting like it's the 19th century. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, Patrick, you'll appreciate this question. It is from Landy. She's she uh, is asking, is 19 too young to own this kind of business? Oh, <laughs> you know who that reminds me of, don't you, Eric? I do. I know exactly. Where yeah, you're going. we had a yeah we had a young, a young lady uh, in New Mexico who came to the training and. She, she was like, I don't know, maybe 20, 21 years old at the time, and she said uh, the very same thing to me at, during the, the week. She said, do you think my youth, you know, is you know, a, a drawback? And I said, no, you just do what we teach you to do, and people will fall in love with you. They will admire the fact that you are a young person trying to start your own business, and uh, 
we'll position you as a part of the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies. You're just opening right. in the local office, uh, you know, for our network. And she just took that business and just ran with it, Eric. It was just amazing. Within the, within about 60 days, she had a couple of doctors doing the billing for them, and it just grew from there because she did you know a good job for them, and she got referrals, of course. Well, let's talk a little bit about what doctors like to do. They don't like to do their billing. They probably aren't. I can't think of a doctor sitting down there going through CPT codes or procedure codes or diagnosis codes and putting those all in there. Um, no, doctors I, like to see patients, don't they? That, that's why they went to medical school. It wasn't to learn how to do all the different things that uh, you know medical billers do. Although it has to be done, somebody has to do it or they don't get paid from the insurance companies and, uh, and from the government agencies like Medicare. But they don't like that part of their business. If you took a survey of 100 doctors and said, how many of you just love uh, the, the, the billing side of your, your practice, you wouldn't get a hand raised. Yeah, not, not one. I, I mean, no. what, what doctors like to do are seeing these patients. That's, that's, that's right. what they, that's, that's what they, and every doctor that I've ever talked to, whether it's been through a demo, whether it's seeing them face to face, uh, they want to see patients and get paid. Even uh, office managers will tell you that, Eric. We have a misconception among people looking into this business that an office manager might be uh, afraid that you're going to take away their job. We show people, on the other hand, how to show that office manager that you're going to become their friend and make them the hero uh, because you're going to solve the cash flow problems for the doctor, uh, help the doctor see more patients, and of course that's even what the office manager got into uh, healthcare for. Believe me, it wasn't because, unless you went to some special school, it wasn't to, to do the billing. That's the least thing, that's the thing that gives her the most headache probably when she goes home because she, she has to deal with that and a dozen other things. But seeing the patients, helping the doctor see patients, you're right, that, that's exactly what they want to do. Yeah, and let, let's, let's kind of start breaking this down. Patrick, I'm going to get to this next slide here, and why don't you kind of go through the cost of, of what we've seen, and this is these are really numbers from one of our licensees here. Uh, oh, we went one, one too many there. So let's go back one slide there. There we go. Uh, this is actually a, an, an analysis cost for physicians doing billing in their office and then what it could be if it was outsourced to one of our licensees. Yeah, so as you can see, folks, we've used an illustration here. I'll uh, see if I can get the little pin here. Oops, I went back to the next slide also. <laughs> We're out of control here, totally out of control. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we base this on an average of about 400 claims per month. Eric, we've seen doctors with twice that many claims, of course, and some with half that many claims. It's just a number that we use because for a general practitioner, that's probably a you know good average. Uh, right. And then, of course, you multiply that times 12 months a year, and at about a hundred dollar average face value of the claim times six uh, percent. Now, folks, let me tell you, talk about that six percent just for a second because. We teach our licensees that doctors are used to paying a percentage of all the money that's brought in by a billing company. That's pretty standard out there. And Derek, we've seen that run from what, 5% to, uh, I don't know, 7 8%? Correct. Yeah. But in this case, we're just using 6%. So that means the doctor would be paying you and you would be earning $28,000 for doing those 400 claims a month. Now, we'll show you here in a minute how long that, that will take you to do those 400 claims, by the way. But uh, going down the chart, look, if the doctor has his billing done in his own office, assuming he has one and a half uh, people doing that billing at $15 an hour, he's going to spend $46,000 just for their salary. And then just look at all the other things that are there. Right. Just in, just in labor costs right there, you, there is a, a, a huge savings for a doctor to get that out of his office or her office. Yeah. And then you add in the payroll taxes, workers' comp insurance, uh, errors and omissions insurance that he buys for his uh, workers, training costs, leave coverage, employee benefits, hardware, software, and IT support. Uh, it mounts up. There's $65,000 in the typical office uh, just for those costs alone. So it's it's 48% less expensive for the doctor to outsource to you. And how would you like to earn $28,000 for 
every doctor that you had. And we've got licensees who have dozens of doctors, don't we, Eric? I exactly. just talked to uh, Attorney Martins uh, in California. She just signed up her 50th. That's oh five zero doctor. Yeah. And, and in fact, a lot of people ask. I mean, a lot of people that are probably on the call today want to kind of know what are they going to be making, uh, you know, and this kind of shows that. Now, I actually tell people anywhere from 28 to 30 to up to $35,000 a year per doctor. And that's kind of always based upon a little some variables, as we know, what kind of doctor, the specialty of the doctor, how many patients are there seeing, is that doctor seeing. So I think this 28.8 is right in line with what we see is right about that thirty thousand dollar mark. Yeah, I did. Year. I did the math on uh, if you were charging seven percent, uh, you'd make about thirty six, thirty three thousand six hundred dollars. So uh, it depends on a lot of factors, of course. But you're right, Eric. That's we found that generally true. Twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars is what you can figure for any uh, typical doctor. So just do the math. I tell people just tell me how many doctors you need to make the kind of income you'd like to earn. And exactly. We'll show you how to get there. Yeah. All right, so Patrick, getting back to our question, or really why starting your medical billing in 2014 is critical for your success. A lot of people are going to be a little afraid of these billing codes, these codings, and everything. Do they need to have experience? Why, you know, what what's what's the deal about this experience thing? Well, that's the neat part about this. Uh, that's a big big misconception out there, Eric, isn't it? That people need to have some sort of uh, uh, billing experience or, or some kind of coding training because everybody knows that there's some codes involved in uh, doing medical billing if they have looked into it at all. Uh, they're called uh, diagnosis codes. That's the ICD-9 uh, code, soon to be ICD-10. And then you've got the procedure codes, the CPT codes they're called. So anyway, the point is uh, there, there's a lot of numbers involved and people think they have to know what those numbers represent and have all that memorized. And they don't. Right. That, that's not necessary. Uh, and and tell them why, Eric. Well, well again, because uh, first of all, our system has all the codes in them. And what's going to be good for you as a licensee and for those doctors is that these doctors know that they're moving from these ICD nines to these ICD ten codes. And uh, I think we even showed a graph last week of showing the cost of what it's going to cost these doctors going from these and they're not going to have that but for you as a as an ABS licensee your experience is our experience now Patrick I'm gonna let you kind of go through this because you've been around these 20 years you've been you've had ABS for 20 years now so let's talk about the kind of experience that licensees will have immediately once they become a licensee yeah, so, so uh, by 1994, my wife and I had figured out that there were other people who wanted to know how we were making uh, a pretty decent income just working out of our home still. So we put together a training and support package in 1994. That was 20 years ago, uh, next, uh, well, two months from now, January. Right. And, and so we, we say to people, look, it doesn't matter that you don't have the experience because you're a part of our network of independent medical billing companies. And so we have 20 years of billing experience. We have 20 years of marketing experience, how to sign the doctors up, how to get them as clients. Uh, then, of course, we have 20 years of coding experience, and we have now certified medical coders as part of our team. Uh, 20 years of service experience. Folks, we've been supporting and training other people in this business for 20 years. Now, you may just have run across us on the Internet, but that doesn't mean we're brand new. We've been out there doing this for a long, long time. And, of course, we have 20 years of business experience, which means we know how to help you build a business. We know some of you are working a full-time job right now. Uh, you have never owned your own business, don't even know where to begin. We cover all of that in our training and take you and lead you by the hand. So that's why you don't need the billing and, and coding experience that you think you might need. <laughs> Yeah, and that kind of goes along with, the uh, again, Landy's asking the question there, will I be taught everything I need to know to help these doctors out? And exactly, that's what we're, that's what we're getting you to know. And, and I love this picture that you found, Patrick. It's just this young girl trying to figure out, can I, what, what do I got to learn all these codes? And folks, as you can see on the right-hand side of this, there are so many codes that you would possibly have to memorize. There's no need for that, no need for learning all those codes. 
No, in fact, the reason for that, folks, is because uh, here's a screenshot of our system as someone's actually putting in a claim. And as you can see, uh, there's an area on here. Let me see if I can get my pen back here and I'll show you. There's an area here where you're actually uh, able to search for those codes. So here's where one of the codes goes down here in this little box right here. Here's another one of the codes, the uh, diagnosis codes. And uh, the computer has all of those codes built into it. We have all the codes already. We don't only have the ICD-9 codes, but we've also got the ICD-10 codes that are not even going to be required until October of next year. Correct. So we're way ahead of the curve. So you don't have to know the codes. Look, you're basically taking what the doctor gives to you electronically. You'll show, we'll show you how you do that. But you'll get that information from the doctor and just put it into our system. If the code's wrong, it will tell you, and it'll help you look up the right code. And then we matter have the certified medical coders that can help you with that as well, of course. Matter, matter of fact, Patrick, whenever I was doing the demo for that licensee I was telling you about earlier, I actually had that office manager say, so give me your codes that you normally use. And so we were able to put those in there. She goes, that's wonderful. You have them all in there. I said, we have them all there all the time. They're all updated. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the great thing. We hear about uh, people who have server-based software, you know, the kind that resides on your hard disk, on your computer, and they're having to update those codes constantly and make sure they're accurate. We don't have to do that. Every time you log into our cloud-based system, folks, from any computer in the world that has an Internet connection, you are looking at the latest codes. They have been updated constantly behind the scenes uh, by our certified medical coders and are accurate in, in the system. Yeah, correct. And then, really, what we're training you to become is a revenue cycle specialist. Now, Patrick, why don't you kind of take this because I think this is where that paradigm shift starts to happen with a lot of folks. You know, we a lot of people come in thinking, "I'm gonna, oh, I'm just going to do medical billing." But folks, what you're going, what Patrick's going to talk to you about now is you're going to be more than just a medical billing person. You're going to be a revenue cycle specialist and then the business owner of that. Go ahead, take it, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, for example, folks, as this illustrates here, you are the business owner now. You, you don't become just a medical biller working for the doctor uh, or saying that you're just a medical biller. You become a revenue cycle specialist. Now, the revenue cycle for a medical practice is every aspect. It's where they get all of their revenue from the insurance companies, from Medicare and Medicaid, uh, from their patients. Those are all revenue sources that we will show you how to become the specialist that helps the doctor not only get more of that money, but get it faster and plug up all those leaks inside their practice where their profits are draining out. We're going to show you how to fix all that. You become the true medical billing specialist, a consultant, a medical consultant to doctors not just a medical biller. So by positioning yourself that way, and when you go out and actually begin uh, contacting doctors and marketing your services, you'll see that we position you much, much bigger and much higher than any of the competitors that are anywhere in your area. They're just medical billers. Yeah, they're just folks, and, and I think that's where we're trying to hopefully demonstrate to you and illustrate to you that this is why you don't need feel like you need the experience or have to have a certain amount of experience coming in here because immediately again first of all when you become a licensee you will be you'll have that experience because of our experience and then plus with that when you do get into this class you're going to learn that we truly are positioning you as the business owner of a medical billing company and that should put you in a little bit different paradigm of thinking and it'll help you as you go out there and end up doing your marketing campaigns as well. Yeah, some people uh, are, are kind of concerned when they first contact us about how am I going to position myself when I don't know a thing about the medical billing industry or the healthcare industry. Well, first of all, with our one-week training program here in Dallas, we get you off to a fast start. We give you more knowledge in that five days than most office managers have had in their entire career because most of them have just learned what they know about the billing side of uh, the medical practice from the person who worked before them on the job training, so to speak. So we're going to give you so much information that you will become very knowledgeable. But that's okay that you don't know everything because, again, you position yourself as 
I am opening a local office for the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies. We have offices from coast to coast. We do thousands of claims every day from, for hundreds of doctors from coast to coast. So not only do you position yourself that way as someone who is a part of a big network, but somebody who has the backing of that network. So no matter what question is asked, folks, we can help you answer that question. There you go. Folks, again, I think there's not a question, and that's why we do what we do with those demos, is, is that we've heard all those questions out there, and if we haven't, <laughs> we at least know what sources to go to to make sure that we go get those. So, Patrick, moving along here uh, and getting to that next slide here, this is always a question that a lot of people have is, okay, how much can I make? And how much can I make without having to hire other people? Well, you know, before I answer this question, let me just kind of give a disclaimer here, folks. I can't tell you how much money you individually are going to make because I don't know you. I don't know your work at habits, your work ethic. I don't know anything about your area of the country. All I know is that we've got people in large cities, in little tiny, tiny cities with about 2,000 population that are making this business work. So even though we can't promise you a certain amount of money, we can show you what the average is. Uh, and if you think yourself above average, then that's good, right? Because you could certainly make more than that. So let's go to our website here and just check that out. And uh, what we're going to do is actually open up a real uh, browser here on the web with our website in it. Now I'm going to enlarge that a little bit, Eric. See if this uh, kind of helps everybody to see that a little bit better. I'll zoom in here a little bit. That'll take a second. And on our website, folks, we actually have a tab up at the top right here called Income Potential. Inside that, there's a medical billing income calculator. Let's go to that, and I'll show you how you fill that out. Now, we've already got some numbers in there for this example. Uh, for example, it asks you for the number of doctors that you'd like to have as clients. Hopefully, you want to have more than one. We have licensees who have over 200 doctors. <laughs> Uh, but you, you, you could start with one, of course, and then let's say the average number of patients that each doctor sees per day is about 20. Some doctors can see 30 and 40 patients, so that's right. not a big number. And then the average number of days the office is open, let's just leave five in there. Now the percentage that we're showing there is that 6% uh, of an average claim amount, so we'll leave it down in the low end there. Uh, and the claim amount is about $100. So let's leave all those numbers just as they come up when you first go to that site. Now, remember, you can change those numbers anything you want to, but when you submit that, you'll see that it is close to what we were showing a while ago. This one shows $31,200. It's right here. Let me see if I can circle that for you. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. I pushed something I shouldn't have pushed. <laughs> okay, that's because I'm on a website. Sorry, I can't circle this, but I can point to it right here. And... Uh, Folks, that's a $2,600 a monthly income. For some people, that is a full-time income with one doctor. With now, if you doctor. go back, and uh, let's say that we tell people that all you need is a handful of doctors, so let's just change that to a, to a five. That's a handful, right? We'll keep all the other numbers the same and then submit it. So, folks, if you'd like to make a healthy six-figure income, uh, you need five doctors, as you can see from this. It's not that hard because this is a very high profit business because uh, with very little cost involved and it's it's mainly your labor and if you're doing all the billing yourself and Eric someone could do five doctors pretty easily couldn't they they certainly could and and a matter of fact when we get over to our, our slide again we kind of broken down the average of what it takes to actually process a claim and again folks these are these are just average numbers these are uh, certainly, uh, we know that some can be a lot easier than this. Uh, some could be a little bit more difficult. So we've kind of split the the uh, what it would do. So when you're thinking about when do I need to hire somebody? Again, Patrick showed you uh, one doctor, and you can see how much you can make. It was about twenty. Uh, what was that? About twenty-eight hundred dollars a month, somewhere around right in that area. Twenty-six, then, I think. Yeah. Yeah, twenty-six, and then so. The average time it takes you to process one claim is two minutes. Or uh, less, and, yeah. Yeah, two minutes or less. And then with that, uh, the average number of claims a general practitioner is going to have is about 350. Now, 
we, again, we're kind of using round round numbers here. We kind of said 400. That one's 350. But you can see if we took two minutes times 350, that's 700 minutes, or about 12 hours a month. Yeah. To make what so, was that? $2,600 extra a month. Right. So when people ask us, well, why does it? Uh, why is there such a huge profit here? Uh, are you not charging too much, maybe, uh, for the doctor? No, because folks, we're going to show you, and we've already shown you one chart already, that shows you that you're saving the doctor a lot of money. And yet at the same time, you making a nice, uh, whatever that comes out to per hour, it's, it's a good uh, hourly wage. Yeah, I mean, if you took uh, 2,600, I guess, divided by 12 hours, that's, that's, pretty, good, that's pretty good pay. And so, for, folks, what you'll understand here is that maybe at four and, a, four and a half, five doctors there, you're going to be thinking it's about time to hire if you want to keep continue to uh, continue to grow that business there. Now, another critical issue, uh, Patrick, is HIPAA, HIPAA com compliant uh, delivery of information, and uh, I believe one of our uh, services that we have that is one of our greater services is iDocs now because a lot of people are asking and including this this one doctor who still does a lot of claims by paper how do you get that information from that doctor's office over to um, the, the billing company so you want to let's talk a little bit about the iDocs now and our HIPAA compliant delivery well, first of all, let's talk about HIPAA. For some people, that uh, is probably a, a, an acronym that they're not familiar with. It's the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. That is, the government came up with this uh, ruling, this uh, uh, law, that says that you have to be compliant and protect the privacy of uh, the patient information. Uh, interesting because uh, of what is in the news right now about what's going on with the uh, healthcare.gov website. But uh, right. the point is that to be HIPAA compliant means that your system has to be very protective. So one of the ways we've decided to do that uh, is to use iDocs Now. Now that's our brand name for a secure storage of paper documents that can be scanned in and stored online for the doctor. And when you see all the, look at all the files, you've seen those kinds of files there in the back of the doctor's uh, uh, office there, those can all be turned into electronic documents. So when you set up a doctor, you're setting him up on this system that you'll have access to, to send you all of his data electronically in a HIPAA compliant system called iDocs Now. It works like this, in the doctor's office, uh, you'll place a small scanner there in the doctor's office. That's part of your setup fee that you'll charge the doctor for getting started. And uh, that scanner can take all the documents. Uh, someone at the end of the day, for example, can take all the encounter uh, pages that have come from the doctor, put them into the scanner, and it goes right into your online system that you then have access to. Now, this guy is showing him with two monitors. Some people invest another you know, $100 in a monitor and set it up so they look at the document that came in from the doctor on the left side there, and on the right side, as you can see, he's in our iClaim online billing system. So it makes it a wonderful way to put the data in with never having to touch a piece of paper. And, and this is critical because I think a lot of billing companies still, Patrick, um, sometimes they drive over to go pick up this stuff and really or use FedEx, right? Yeah, and that w that can be costly. Uh, but you know, as soon as you, as a billing company, and your take patient information out of a doctor's office, it is uh, you you could have been violating the HIPAA violation already. So, again, these are some of the critical issues that we have come to provide a solution for, uh, and one is this iDocs now. So, it, it's, it's an easy way to get this, especially for, again, like this doctor's office that we were just talking about, who does a lot of things by paper still. They're not using an EMR system. Uh, right. I couldn't even believe it, Patrick. Here is a doctor who is a surgeon who's been in business for 20 plus years, and is still not using an EMR system. Yeah, electronic medical records is uh, is the future for sure. 
Uh, and some doctors are just dragging their feet thinking, uh, maybe I can retire before I have to get into all that stuff. But uh, it's coming. And uh, in fact, they're getting some incentive money right now for getting involved with electronic medical records. Money from the government to help the doctor uh, you know, get, get, get involved in that with the, whatever expenses are involved. Hey, I'm, I'm looking at some of the questions here, Eric, and uh, it's hard to believe that it's 40 after already, but uh, I wanted to touch on one that's uh, covered here. One of, the, um, one of the questions was from Shalkat. Shalkat? Sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing that first name. Uh, it says, out of the 30,000 income that we just showed there that you could make for one doctor, what is the cost? So that leads us right into the next slide, doesn't it? It does. I was, I was, I was actually going to ask you that question right there. It, there are low monthly expenses. You know, Patrick, a, a lot of people ask, wow, outside of my licensing fee, uh, what other expenses am I going to have on a monthly basis? Yeah, so let's talk about some of those because obviously you have to have a computer. We've told you it's a cloud-based system, so you know that you have to have a computer. It can be a desktop. It can be a PC. It can be a Mac. It can be a laptop. Uh, you can use any kind of computer that's out there as long as you have access to the Internet. And who doesn't nowadays? I can get that at McDonald's, right? <laughs> so a computer that have access to the Internet through a browser, and boom, you're in business. You have to have a phone, of course, of some kind. Now, a lot of our licensees just use their cell phones. Uh, you can change the message on your cell phone, at least, to sound like a business message, or use a virtual office number. We'll show you more about that in our training, but basically it's a... Uh, a number that you get, usually an 800 number even, that the doctor can call at any time and that forwards that to whatever number you want it to go to and has a great voicemail system uh, built into it. Then, of course, uh, to do some uh, marketing, initially you're going to have to have some investment. Now, with us, we are going to provide you over 2,000 pieces of medical marketing uh, materials, professional, full-color, proven marketing materials. So you don't really have a cost up front for the materials, but you do have some cost if you do any kind of mailing of those things, letters and postcards and things like that. Or maybe if you join some of the associations out there. We teach people to get involved in some of the uh, local chambers of commerce or uh, business net networking international groups, uh, and they have a yearly fee. So you'll have some cost there, but folks, uh, that's it. All the processing costs are absorbed by your clients. Uh, Let's talk about the processing costs just for a second, Eric. Uh, talk about the clearing houses and why uh, our licensees don't have to worry about that. Well, a, a lot of people on the call today or who might be listening may not even know what a clearing house is. And the clearing house is, is the in-between middle person, if you want to say the middle man, that is between the iClaim system or any really electronic uh, processing or claims to go through and then it goes over to the insurance companies to be paid. Now, in all the, those that I know of, Patrick, outside of ours, uh, everybody else has to use uh, a third-party clearinghouse. Well, where we're different and where our biggest differentiation is is the fact that we own our own clearinghouse. So not only do we own it, that helps bring the cost down even further for our licensees, and really importantly, it's really dealing with our claims in real time. So again, we're going to get those claims paid in, in half, half the time that it normally takes them to do it currently right now. So we're keeping the cost down, getting the doctors paid more and even quicker. Yeah, so we tell people again that most of your costs, once you've got a computer and a phone, for example, once you've done some marketing, your ongoing costs are minimal because most of it is your labor. And of course, if you hire other people, uh, they'll get to a point where you're actually hiring people, as we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, that's going to have some cost for you there, but then you are able to focus on getting more clients and building your business. Exactly. Yeah, so those processing costs are going to be absorbed by your client. So uh, there are costs that go along with iClaim. You'll see that in our uh, the virtual brochure, so please check that out. And with the EMR, but again, all those costs are going to be absorbed by yours. So again, kind of getting back to that, Patrick, about how much someone's going to make when we show them that twenty-eight, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, again, to the, the question that came in, how much of that cost is going to go towards these costs? And as you can really see, really, if you already have a computer, uh, you're probably just spending money on your phone already. There may be a few uh, uh, 
spending dollars in marketing or associations, but really outside of that, you're, you're going to get to take home a majority of that money that uh, you do collect from that doctor. We tell people to figure somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of actual costs, uh, and and the rest is profit. So uh, 80 percent of 30,000 is 24,000 dollars. Now that's that's being very generous on, on very costs, generous. assuming that you've got some kind of uh, monthly cost for a phone, maybe uh, maybe some ongoing marketing costs if you're advertising in a uh, some kind of local uh, paper or something like that. But folks, you don't have to spend anything. Once you have a client, it's literally covered. All of your costs are covered by uh, the processing costs are covered by the client themselves. The doctor's paying for all the processing of the claims. Right. Okay. You know, going into 2014, Patrick, and what we've been able to accomplish the last few years is for our new licensees, guess what? We've got doctor references for them. You talk about bill credibility fast. Yes. In fact, uh, we just designed a new marketing piece here, in fact, that shows some of those doctors. Uh, we have folks, actual doctors, who g have given testimonials as to how they like uh, outsourcing their billing. And we give you access to those doctors on a DVD. We have a, a testimonial DVD that's hosted by uh, Hugh Downs of 2020. And we also have flyers like this. So when you give a demo, uh, or we do a demo for you, for your doctor, we can give that doctor, uh, whether they're a podiatrist or a, a, a geriatrician, we can give them any kind of references they want for doctors all over the country because we literally have hundreds of, of clients. Now, they're not your clients, of course, but that doesn't matter. Remember, it's kind of like being a part of uh, Century 21. You open right. a local office, you've never sold a home in your whole life, but Century 21 has, and they've got lots of references, of course. Yeah, and folks, that, that's a great thing for you uh, becoming new into this business because you've got to be thinking about it. If you're researching any business, you probably don't have any uh, experience in that particular business right then and there. But again, one of those advantages here with ABS is that you get to kind of piggyback on our 20 years of experience and not only that, all these doctor references that we have. Right. Patrick, there's a question that's coming here about territories. That kind of leads us right next to the our, our next uh, topic here. Uh, all right. <laughs> no Let's limits on territories. <laughs> that's right. Uh, unlike a franchise, uh, like a Subway sandwich shop, for example, you, you have to have a territory because you couldn't have one opened up every other block, although sometimes it seems like there are. <laughs> they usually have a, like a two-mile radius around each one of those stores. Well, folks, with medical billing, it doesn't matter. In fact, what's going to happen is you're going to do a great job for a doctor in your local area, and then that doctor knows a doctor in another state. Well, hey, with our iDocs now, you know, electronic medical system there, document system, it doesn't matter. You can sign that other doctor up in another state completely over the phone and through the internet and uh, get that doctor going and uh, build it as big as you want. We have licensees who literally have doctors in a dozen or more states. Well, that's right. a good let's, thing. Yeah, let, let's, let, so let's talk about what are their limits. <laughs> Yes, uh, let's see what the limits are. Well, here, here's your territory. When people say, well, tell me exactly what my territory is, uh, well, I'll show it to you here. Here it comes. Hold on for it. <laughs> it's a big graphic, sorry. There it is. <laughs> it's the whole United States. Right. Uh, including Alaska and Hawaii, by the way. So, so what, this, uh, what, what this shows us here, Patrick, I think we can we can certainly see this. And let me see if I can get this this pin down here as well. Let me see if I can do that. But if if you're if you're over here stuck over here, let's say in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, you can have clients in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Can't see those red lines very good, but yes, yeah. you can have them all over the country. It doesn't matter. And uh, in fact, if you haven't talked to some of our licensees, uh, ask your ABS rep, and they'll give you uh, the names and phone numbers of folks uh, anywhere in the country that uh, you know have agreed to take a phone call or two. And uh, you'll find out that some of them will tell you that I have license, uh, I have clients in, in uh, you know other states. So uh, it's a wonderful way to run your business. In fact, we've had people go to Hawaii and run their business from the beach of Hawaii for a month. Uh, because all it takes is an internet connection. 
<laughs> I think I barely heard you, but I think you said that there's internet in Hawaii, and yes, there yes. there is. Yes. Well, you know the, what the other thing goes on about territories, and and there's some references to some questions already about uh, maybe stepping on toes of other licensees. Uh, what about competition? What about what if, do I need to be concerned? And let's so let's get over to that. I mean, that's really kind of brings us into this next slide here is. Let's discuss competition. I think Patrick, you really kind of wanted to go back over to our website and let's talk about the amount of doctors in their particular area. So folks, if you wouldn't mind, for those that you would like Patrick to check your zip code, uh, he's showing you right here on screen, find doctors in my area. Start typing in some of your zip codes and we'll start pulling those in and I'll let Patrick go ahead and pull it up from here. All right. Let's see. Do you see any coming in there? Here's one. Seven, yep. Here's one. Seven five zero four one. Seven five zero four one. That's uh, from Muhammad, right? Okay. That's let's correct. see the results. And uh, this will take you to Google Maps. We've tied this in with Google Maps. So let's uh, let's choose family doctors uh, just to start with. You see the list of types of doctors over here to the left that you can do billing for. It's not a complete list, by the way. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a good start, so let's, let's start with the family doctors. All right, and then it comes up with another window here, and uh, there's a little link you would miss unless you know where to look for. It's right up here. I'm circling it there on the screen. Wait just a second. It'll show up there. Yeah, we're, uh, we're just a little bit behind here on you. Yep. I'm watching my, uh, my laptop here where I'm looking at it there. Boy, it takes a while, doesn't it, to get that other screen up there. This is because GoToWebinar, the system we're using uh, sometimes with many, many people on here, is a little slower. Okay, there it is. See it right in here? It says, go to the list of top results. So when you click on that, it then shows you some of a beginning list of the doctors in that zip code. But look right up here. Here's the key number right here. Let me see if I can circle that so everybody can see that. Oops, I can't do that again. Here it is right here. I'll highlight it. There we go about 4,110. <laughs> so the reason we're showing you this, folks, is because it helps people wrap their brain around the fact that it, since it only takes you five doctors to make a good six-figure income, uh, Mohammed, for example, in your area, you've got 4,110 doctors. Well, let's say half of those are doing their own billing and they would never outsource it. Uh, you've got the other half then that are open to outsourcing. Maybe they already are outsourcing and are not happy with the results that they're getting, you have those many uh, doctors that you can contact. So how many licensees could you have in any one given area? Well, I can tell you, we've got some areas where we've got two or three licensees, and they never run across one another. I mean, they would tell us if they did. So right. that becomes a non-issue. In fact, uh, I encourage you to ask for the names of some of the licensees that you can talk to. Ask them, has, has competition from other licensees ever been a uh, an issue, or even from other billing companies, as far as that goes, we don't have any competition, do we, Eric? No, no, we don't. And 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 again, showing this to you, Raj has asked the question here: is uh, how do we approach a doctor who needs a service? And and that's what you do. You, you're you're going to kind of go out there and you're going to find out what's it actually in your area, and then uh, with some, uh, Patrick, I know that some of our licensees, I know we we kind of did this with our research and development side. But even through there, if you want to research and find out what um, the um, medical societies are out there, uh, Raj, those are some of those places that you can go to and find out what doctors need your services. So there are many, many things that we'll discuss in training class. Uh, we'll even talk with you one-on-one -on -one here uh, when, when you become a licensee about other techniques about trying to find doctors. But I'm, I'm telling you, there are doctors out there, again, just like I did today with a demo of a doctor who's been a surgeon for 20 plus years, still trying to do billing in his own office and still doesn't have an EMR. I think that's the biggest drawback that I get from a lot of people is, is that they, they tell me, Eric, all these doctors already have a billing service or they already have an EMR service. Not all of them do. No. Not all of them do. No. How come we're seeing signups? 
uh, every week from our licensees all across the country signing up doctors. How, why are they signing them up? Because they're either not happy with the results they're getting with their own staff inside their office, or they're not happy with the outsourced solution that they're currently using. You'd be surprised how many people, uh, doctors, are not happy with their current biller because they don't have the latest technology. Now, Eric, we're kind of running fast close here, so I'm going to move what? quickly through the rest of these. Uh, yeah. Folks, one of the reasons you'll, you'll be successful in 2014 is because you'll be very unique in the marketplace. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, uh, we've already mentioned our online iClaim system and our electronic medical record system we call EMRX. Folks, these are the leading technology that's out there, and when your doctor uh, sees a demonstration of this and how it can help uh, them as a practice work with you as the medical biller to get more money into their practice faster, uh, they will just fall in love with it. Uh, this system connects to all the major labs out there. So as you can see, uh, we're illustrating it here on an iPad. And uh, that can be accessed from any computer or internet device uh, that, that's connected to the internet, any, uh, any device. Drawing tool built into it. The doctors love this, don't they, Eric? You've seen, yes. shown this to some uh, doctors, and they go, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, they can pull in their own images. They can take pictures with the system right there on the iPad. They can take a picture of somebody's ankle and actually draw, uh, draw right on the, uh, and it adds it to the, the patient record. We have e-prescriptions, of course, set up with uh, any, uh, any pharmacy anywhere in the United States that's set up right. for e-prescriptions. And this is the cool part when you illustrate this, Eric. I love to see you. You can actually tap a little uh, button there on the iPad keyboard right beside the space bar there. It looks like a microphone. And you just talk, and it turns it into text. It's, it's got dictation built right into our system. And then this, this next one here about the virtual office, I, that, I think oh. you like this one more than anything. <laughs> Yeah, this is fantastic. I, I think this is the future of a lot of medical, because uh, uh, there's a lot of times that a doctor doesn't have to see you. Uh, maybe they've already seen you. They know what the problem is. You just want to talk to them about certain symptoms. They can actually see you as they talk to you and, and uh, do text through the thing to send you uh, uh, instructions and so forth. It is fantastic. We have a built-in patient portal that allows the patients to uh, talk with the doctor. And, yes, the doctor can actually bill you can bill for the doctor uh, these these uh, visits online. Well, what other questions can we answer right quick, Eric? Any others lingering over? Wow, I didn't even realize the time had gotten away from us. I mean, we, we covered <laughs> a lot going into here. And folks, I know that we're probably not going to get to all of your questions uh, right off the bat. But Patrick, before we do run out of time, and there are some people that are going to have to probably get off right up at the top of the hour, uh, I know that you wanted to take a little bit of time and explain the money back guarantee. So take yeah, a little I've, bit of time I've, here I've to do told, that. Uh, I've told people about this before on these webinars, and I, I like to show it and, and explain to people that this is right out of the agreement that you sign with us, folks. Uh, and there's no weasel words, I call them, in this guarantee. <laughs> I tried to make it as straightforward as I can, so let me read it to you. If at the end of the training workshop, now let me pause there. It doesn't have to be at the end of the week. It could be on Wednesday. It could be on Tuesday. It doesn't matter. If you at some point decide this is not the right business for you, we don't want your license fee. What we want is for you to make a success of this business because we make money on the back-end transactions as well. Uh, so it's called transactional residual income for us as a company. So we're interested in you being successful, not, not your license fee. So at any time during the workshop, you could ask for your money back. Then it says, for any reason. Now, folks... From a legal standpoint, that that you can't squeeze out of that. <laughs> any means any. <laughs> it really does. And it means that if you came up with any reason, maybe you saw Eric up there teaching during one of the sessions and you didn't like the way he taught, uh, it doesn't matter. Just tell us and you will get every penny of your money back. Then it says if you don't think this business is right for you. Now, folks, you're the only one that can make that decision. We certainly can't. You know whether it's right for you and your family, and we're not going to try to talk you out of that, by the way. Somebody who does come to us and says, I don't like this, I, I want my money back, it's a done deal. No questions asked. You simply tell any of our staff members, and they'll arrange for you to receive a full refund. There's another legal term, 
full means every penny that you paid to us, we give back to you. Now, I can't give you back the money you spent to get down here. Hopefully, you got some miles maybe on your, uh, you know, for American Airlines miles or something to get here. And I can't give you back any money from the hotel. But you will enjoy your stay and just think of it as a vacation. And you spent, uh, you know, $800,000, whatever, to investigate and see whether this is real. That's the only way we know how to do it. And uh, I don't know of any other company in America that does that kind of thing. Do you, Eric? No, no, not not a bit. Nothing in the uh, franchise world or nothing in the business opportunity world. So, folks, we want to, again, close out this afternoon and to remind you that our tr last training class that we have coming up is November the 9th through the 13th. 